All right, guys, welcome back. Survival Living here. Now, today we are starting our four-day, three-night campout trip. We are in northwest Florida. Currently, I'm not willing to give away my location, but we got a lot of camera gear and our backpack full of gear. Now, we'll go over the gear that's inside the backpack later, but most of it is gear that we're taking with us to the Pathfinder course up there in Ohio in September. I have to sit there and train with this gear and make sure it's good quality before I go all the way up there. Now, for four days and three nights, we'll be surviving with just what we got. Now, I do have a tent. The reason why I've got a tent is for my camera gear. Got expensive camera gear. I got a lot of it. That's what's in this bag. I don't want to get damaged. We got a lot of thunderstorms out here. A lot of thunderstorms. So, the next four days, we're going to be getting pounded by thunderstorms. Uh... It's going to be fun. So, anyway, out here, it's just, it's just a nature hike, okay? Supposedly. There's a lot of game out here. A lot of streams, creeks, a couple ponds. Uh, there's a few lakes in the area. We're going to try to see if we can't find a couple of those. And uh, live off the land for four days. We have absolutely no food. I have a two-liter bottle hanging off my backpack. That is to help collect water so I can purify and actually have clean drinking water. Um, I've got one canteen full of water with me right now. Now when you think about Florida, the thing that pops in most people's mind is waves, sandy beaches, Margaritaville. Yeah, this is Northwest Florida. There's actually a lot of dangers out here. Um, you, you can enjoy yourself camping out here for sure. But, in this part of Florida, we have Black Bear. This river chain that I am walking towards uh, feeds one of our larger lakes in the area. And I've personally seen Black Bear around that lake. So we're just north of that, about 17 miles. Now, with that in mind, we've got uh, Bobcat. Many years ago, there used to be Florida Panthers out here. I've never seen a print of a Florida Panther uh, this far north, but it doesn't mean it's not because there are some swamp lands out this way. We've got plenty of snakes, water moccasins, cotton mouse, rattlesnakes. We got them. We got scorpions. We got all kinds of spiders, just like the spider web I just walked into. You can definitely tell no one's been on this trail for a bit. So, there are dangers here. I have my knife, and I have a hatchet. These are items I get to use during the Pathfinder course, and that's why we brought it. Um, basically, I'm just taking the gear that I'm allowed to bring, except for the tent. The tent is for protecting our equipment, because the camera gear, like I talked about. I want to bring all my camera gear. I've got trail cam. I've got camcorders, i got the camera right here, the Hero 7 Black. i got one on my chest. That's a knockoff camera, but it actually does very well. So, that's what we're doing. Like I said, it is a nature hike, nice little trail area, but this stuff is thick, guys. And that's where we're going to be going in. We are trying to stage up actual survival situation. I don't want to set up a camp and have a hiker come be bopping through while I'm dying of thirst <laughs> you know what I'm saying so we're gonna go off trail because most people run into issues when they go off trail all right I have topographical maps of the area I got compasses all those things in case I was to ever get turned around I do know how to use these type of tools most people don't but something everybody really should start looking into because map reading once you understand the process it's actually very easy. You just gotta take the time to actually learn it. Now, it is currently 9.30 in the morning. Our highs today, 92 degrees, 80% humidity. Yeah, it's getting hot very quickly. Now, an outdoor survival. Sweat can kill you many different ways. One, you can become dehydrated. Two, you can definitely get hypothermia from sweating. Now, I'm not expecting any hypothermia 
in the situation we're in because I think the lows is going to be 73 tonight, which is very survivable. But in a survival situation where you're outdoors and there's some really cold weather, uh, that could definitely be an issue. So when your body starts to sweat, you need to start slowing down, and it just depends on your situation. Out here, you don't want to have a heat stroke or you're done. Not cool. Now, I don't have the microphone on. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but we found a small stream. Now, this is an underground stream. It actually comes up in this location, then it disappears back into the ground. Let me bring you in. So, in a life and death situation, especially survival. Sorry, guys, I'm looking for snakes before I squat down here. This would save your life. This is... uh. Everything you really need is water, all right? That's one of the first things. You can last a long time without food. Drinkable water is priority next to shelter, all right? Now, this water is coming out of the ground, coming up here, then dropping back in the ground. Odds are you could drink it in an emergency situation. My personal belief, boil every type of water you come across. That will run it through a filter or treat it with chemical treatments. I do not like drinking water straight from a stream anymore. It's not like when I was a kid. There's a lot of pollutants, plus the fact there's also bacteria in water. Uh, I mean, it's natural water. They don't know what pooped upstream. But now I can see where this water's coming out of the ground and see where it's going back in. Odds are it's fine, but I don't drink water unless I purify it. Okay, guys, so out here in Florida, especially where I'm at, it's always a good idea to keep your eyes towards the ground. There's a lot of snakes. But you also want to be looking for signs of food. Now, what we have here is a husk. Alright, that's a nut. All I'm seeing is the husk right now. So, I just got to identify where the tree is. And we've found a source of food. There's the uh, there's the rest of it right there. Okay, we got some more water in the area. Now, this could just be water runoff from a storm, or this also might be part of a larger spring system or a small spring system. See all the sandy areas means that there's a lot of water that usually runs through here. You also see part of a washed out spot. I'm thinking this might be water runoff from some of the storms we've been having. It's got a very slow trickle. All right. It'd be hard to get water out of this, but I'm going to show you how. All right. Like I said, we've got this water trickle. So what we're going to do, we're going to dig this back. This is all sand here. But we also need to make sure we've got a pass so our filters out of water a little bit better. So it doesn't stay all murky on us when it builds up. We're going to dig out. We're not going to mess with the stream up top there. We're just going to carve us out a nice little spot. Wash my hands here a little bit. I'm going to let this wash itself back. As you can see, it's starting to clear itself up again, getting rid of all that darker dirt. We're just going to let it keep on filling up, and eventually we'll push this on out. So now we have a little bit, just washing some of the sand out of the way here. It's washing most of this impurity of the dirt out, and it have a sandy bottom. It'll still need to be filtered out, but now we have access where we can actually start getting more water. The, digger, the deeper you dig it, the better it will be as far as getting water from it. Uh, you'll be able to set your cup in here and scoop it out and boil it and whatever filtration that you want to be using to get your water out. But I took that little stream, we dug it out so we can actually get a nice little pool of water building in here. Okay, so we are finding ourselves on another trail. This is it's a beat up, looks abandoned trail. Looks like it hasn't been used in a very long time. Let me... uh. Pan you around here. 
as you can see hasn't been maintained in a very long time so we went off trail don't do what I'm doing I didn't even test this before I even stepped out on it I could have wound up in a hole Florida especially this part of Florida has a lot of sinkholes uh, one of our most famous one is the devil's hole that is a sinkhole I don't know about 40 miles from our current location south of me and uh, that's another big asshole Let's see if I can negotiate this without knocking myself off just too much gear but when you're filming alone you got to bring extra gear so the sinkholes they just they spring up everywhere here but I do want to point out water there's always water nearby here in Florida I mean on my YouTube channel I've shown how to dig shallow wells because the water table is so high ooh I got rain so that tells me and we got a river there we go I gotta get prepared for this rain let me get my poncho out now this particular poncho I have might not be the most glamorous tactical design poncho but I picked this one because it's actually designed for backpacking I can actually wear my backpack underneath it it's plenty large enough I can button up the sides so it keeps my gear dry now like I said I've got a lot of camera equipment with me so that is definitely priority on keeping dry when this storm comes through but I also got to keep my body dry as much as possible even though I'm wet with sweat the rain here is cold and I don't want to drop my temperature like that from cold weather um, the ambient temperature right now is actually pretty decent it has dropped off a little bit because the storm is blowing in but I can already see clear skies behind the storm right now it's just a little bit a little bit of rain right now nothing major but I know we got thunderstorms rolling in today for the next several days so we got to get to a good camp spot we still got several miles to go before we get to one that I want to get to so you gotta get back at it okay so we finally have trucked in I'm soaked a lot of sweating and we keep on getting these scattered rainstorms uh, we're at a good location spot here now this is a well-used path area this is an old campsite area uh, we do have access to our creek down below we're in a high elevated spot hopefully you can see that back there in the background it's a creek system running through it is down so there is access here keep hearing stuff it's the rain falling on these leaves uh, it's just spot storms it's not even a full storm it's just here and there it's hitting uh, but like I said we're up high so there's I'm mean, gonna have to walk down to this creek system due to all this rain though I was really counting on being able to fish and put fish traps out things like that lines because we didn't bring any food so did a small reconnaissance and let me show you what we we're going to be working with here all right leaving the camp area that's going to be our main camp we will be moving because i know there's some ponds and stuff like that in the area that i do want to get down to but like i said you got to go down the main river's over there the main creek's over there but we got some stagnant water this way and I believe this is going to be the majority of our food if we stay in this area. Now, we're going to continue to try to fish, things like that. But, we've got stagnant pools over here. Let's keep on walking this way. Now, this is my game plan for this location. In my experience, stuff like this down here in Florida does hold a lot of resources as far as frogs, bullfrogs, crayfish, water snakes, 
and the occasional alligator. Sometimes you wind up with a turtle or two. Not always a snapping turtle, but you do wind up with some like mud turtles and things like that. So, we'll have to put out some traps. Since this is a still water area here, and I'm not seeing any tracks right now because it just rained. We'll see about putting some uh, snares and stuff out. Maybe we can catch us some raccoons. Catching a raccoon right about now would be a good idea. I wouldn't mind having a raccoon for dinner. These stagnant pools. Sure, there's resources here. But a lot of prey animals come here. The current's not moving fast. They can come in for drink. But because of that prey animal comes here, so do predators. And that's what we've got to keep an eye out. If we might try to circle around, take a look at that layout over there on that side. As you can see, Florida is some thick brush. It's some bad bush out here. If you look, if you look around, it's not all just pine tree rows for the paper mills. It's wild. Now there might be some edible plants in the area. I know there, there's probably some uh, watercress around here. Usually is. Keep on hearing that water, that rainfall keeps. <laughs> I was watching uh, some Bigfoot shows the other day. Yeah, way to go, man. Watch Bigfoot videos about campers being mutilated before you go out into the woods. You know, Sasquatch, skunk apes, what we call them down here in Florida. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about Bigfoot. I am worried about bears. I do know this is a bear area. So far I have not seen any bear scat, no rubbings. Uh, the reason I do know that this is a bear area because I have lived here before in this area not far and we've seen black bear right in the middle of the road crossing the roads and stuff and this river chain is part of the bigger lake that we saw them around this actually feeds that lake so got a lot of yellow jackets around here too i don't like bees wasps things like that all right so we have that now we need to find water source all right so we got the creek down here Let's go on, head on down here. What is that? Okay. Moving this way. I keep my eyes on the ground out here, guys. Also in Florida, you need to be looking up too in the trees, especially when you gotta go down underneath stuff. Because around the rivers, water moccasins like to hang from the trees. Yeah. You gotta be careful should always be moving slow move with purpose but watch where you're stepping on top of dangerous animals you need to be on the lookout for falls sinkholes I mean here we are this is a this is a sand bank that could have been a complete sinkhole it sucked me down in there into that river that river is moving fast. The reason why that river is moving so fast is the rain. Now this river chain has alligators. I know for a fact 12 miles south of my location it's a lot of alligators. This river is fed by natural springs. Uh, there's a bunch of them here, real nice lagoons and stuff like that. And this has always been a very large river system. But you got to keep an eye out for alligators and stuff, water moccasins. Usually something moving this fast, I've never really had an issue with water moccasins. In the water, I've always had them like up in this stuff here and up in the bank and around here in the sandy stuff, drying themselves out, trying to get warm. Gators, on the other hand, I know this area has a lot of fallen trees and stuff like that in the river due to Hurricane Michael. So we have to keep an eye out for a lot of those dangers standing here on the banks is not the smartest idea because I can't see in that water. All right, so we got a water source. We will have to purify it. Now, the reason why this water source is this reddish color is usually pretty clear. 
um, it's, but it's got a red color to it is because of the tannins in the water Bet from acorn trees to all the dead plant life trees and stuff in here that causes that tannin um, you could drink it once you boil it sure purify it those tannins hurt my belly I, I suffer from ulcers and the tannins in it does give me some problems so we're gonna have to work on our boiling technique pretty good it won't get it all out but it will make the water purified enough to drink because I'm not drinking straight from that stream I'm just not I, I've had dysentery twice no thank you um, it sucks it really does so since we have already located a possible food source definitely located a water source we need to get shelter built all right the rules three minutes without air three hours without shelter exposure three days without water now give or take on that one because uh like down here in florida i don't think i'd make three days without water it's just too hot constantly sweating i think most of my organs would shut down without before three days and you could go three weeks without food 21 days i've heard of people making it longer than that and i've heard people not making it as long but food is always the last a lot of people get worried about food because you feel the hunger pains you'll feel that quick and people be searching for food or they'll be eating their food something to think about when you're in a survival situation you're lost you got food, but you don't have water. When you're eating your food, it requires water to break down for your digestive system to work. You will die of thirst eating. Your body consumes a lot of water. If you don't have water coming in, you're going to run into issues. So water should be one of the top priorities. You got to find a water source. Now, we will have to make fire, things like that. Uh, a lot of this woods wet and we do have our gear that we're like I said going to be taking the Pathfinder course for up there a Dave Canterbury course in September up in Ohio so we have that gear with me I got my ferro rod this is the Black Scout survival ferro rod it does have a little cache compartment here I got char cloth already made up but in the survival course I've got to first make a bow drill it's gonna be one of the first things you got to do so we have to find wood for making a bow drill best thing to do that is to find a dead up upright standing tree or let's take a look over here this looks dead yeah odds are I'm gonna try to make my materials out of this right here Looks like it's been dead for a while. Still really hard. I'll make my board, my spindle. I'll make my bow out of something else around here. That's probably what we're going to use. You got to have dry material, real dry material to make a bow drill work. That's going to be one of the first things we got to accomplish on this trip. Make fire. One, we got to purify water. Now, I do have my flint and steel with us because we're allowed to take that. That's part of the course, too. So we'll be training with that, too. But I do know we've got to do a bow drill. But first thing we got to do is make a shelter. Now, this is going to be the interesting, most difficult part. Because I know we got thunderstorms coming. I want to utilize these trees. See, there's a nice little alcove here. On top of that, I want to build a raised bed. I am in snake country bad. There's a lot of snakes out here. I do not have anything to keep me dry as far as any bedding or anything like that I've got a wool blanket and a tarp now I got that one tent that's for our camera equipment so I'm going to be building a raised bed platform and get our tarp up over this so we have bedding area that we can stay dry in and this is something we got to work on pretty quick because I know we got thunderstorms coming so First thing up, we've got to get our tent set up for our camera gear, because that's most important. And then we've got to work on our survival shelter. 
Now what we have here is some paracord, 550 paracord, and I went ahead and looped around this tree one time on the back side. I'm going to put a bowman together, and we are going to basically slip knot this tree here for our tarp. So it bites down right here. This will be our ridge line for our tarp. Check our trees. We want to make sure there's no wasp nest or anything like that. No surprises before we stick our hand up in here. Because I've done that in the past. I've stuck my hands in places that should not have been. And I paid the price for it. Alright. Now, pull this a little tight. Because our tarp is a canvas tarp. And which means it makes it much heavier than your normal tarps. Now this is a pre-cut line I've already made up. Uh, I think I had the rope at 35 feet because let's face it, most of your trees are never evenly spaced out here in the outdoors. So I gave myself a 35 foot chunk to work with. Now we're going to tie this off so we keep tension on our ridge line. Take all of our excess slack here. I'm gonna tie this stuff up so it doesn't get all knotted up and tangled up out here. All right, ridge line is up. Now this is a six by eight canvas tarp. And since I'm just shy of six foot, we're going to shoot the eight foot across. That way, the majority of my body is protected. And we got our six foot for our kickouts. Now, I don't want this too high up in the air. And I also don't want it too low because we're going to put our raised bed in. But our ridge line's up here. What we're going to do, we're going to run our kickers so we have. Our lines are tarp coming out. Then we can build our raised bed up underneath here. That'll give us plenty of room and it'll help keep us dry. All right, so we've got our hatchet out. We've got us some bank line here. This is tarred bank line. This is what we will be using in that course. I got more at the house. This is just about a hundred foot that I have with us today. Got us some sticks. So we need to make some stakes so we can stake off everything. It doesn't have to be anything immaculate. We just got to uh, be able to stake down our tarp so it doesn't go anywhere in a storm. Now you can use any type of wood you want, whatever. I just want something big that I can actually pound into the ground and um, not have to worry about it coming back up because most of this ground here is real sandy. And because it's sandy, it doesn't take much to uh, pull out, out of the ground out here. So we'll get our hatchet up out of here. So we have a hammer, so we're going to beat down our stakes good. Now you can run your toggle in this thing. Basically it's a loop that goes through your eyelets. And you got a thick enough stick or something to slide in. And that holds your tarp line in. We're actually going to be using a lot of toggles in the Pathfinder course. I just like uh, tying a bowman in it. And just run that through my eyelets. It's just fast, effective, easy. Something I've always done. But when I go take the course, I know I'm going to have to use the toggles. But same process. I can actually use a bowman and then slide it through and put a toggle on it. You know, it's just whatever it is that they want in that course. But I need some uh, tag lines for our tarp. And then we'll 
start adjusting everything out and find out where we want everything at. Now what we have here is our tarp in position. Now we can run some more lines, finish getting it extra taut, whichever way we want to do it. We'll have to you know, do some more modifications. I just need to get this thing up so we can get a raised bed in position. Then we can just adjust our tarp the way we want it. But let's take a look inside here. Oh yeah, very nice and cozy. I figure we get the raised bed about this tall. We will have to pull up some more slack, use more of the eyelets, open up our tarp a little bit more. That way we got plenty of extra room. The wider it is, the better rain protection we'll have as far as the sideways rain that we keep on getting down here in Florida. Uh, but yeah, this is a treated canvas tarp. It should work pretty good. I am upset about all the yellow jackets I keep seeing. I just killed two and now four is back. And they're investigating the dead body of the yellow jacket. Yeah, so I killed one right there. And now they just, they don't seem to be very happy about that. Oh well, the dangers of the outdoors. All right, I gotta get back to work. Okay, so we're working on the first part of our elevated bed. Uh, we got some logs laid out here. See right here, we got a log down here at the foot of the bed. It raises up a couple inches, a few inches. And we got some, another log over here and we got some smaller logs now because we got smaller logs we had to put stakes down just to keep them from rolling out now with this particular type of raised bed sure you can make tripods and then run your beams on them like that this is quick effective fast easy so that's why i like using this once you have your log bases in place then you go and cut or find most of the time it's cutting some long sticks you need your main beams for your body weight all right if they're not thick enough, your bed will give in the center and stuff like that. You have to put another log in the center. Uh, once you have that, then you run your smaller sticks on top of it. Get you some branches. Uh, if you can find some um, evergreens, pines, things like that. Lay over top your sticks so it's not tearing up your back. And uh, then your bed's made. But enough talk. Let me go ahead and show you. So, we only walked, I don't know, 20 yards? I don't know if you still see the, the tarp or not. We got a down tree right here. The branches are broke and they're straight, straight ish. That's what we're looking for. And we got two. We got one right here, one right here. This is going to make good material for our main beams and then for our side cuts, for our other sticks, for our bedding. We can find little smaller pieces to fit those in. But we need something strong on our main beams. And this is going to work. So let me uh, harvest this and then we'll get set up. Oh. Now, one of the biggest threats down here in Florida and in any survival situation is drinkable water. I walked in with only one canteen full of clean drinking water. Now, I did come in with two empty two liter bottles. Uh, I brought those in so we can actually collect extra water, whether it be rainwater or creek water, so I can work on purifying it. Because the fact is, having to run down to the creek every cup to boil water sucks. And then I have to keep a fire going all the time. So having a way of storaging water is a great idea. So what we're working on here, there's still knots and stuff. I decided when to start laying them long ways. Uh, the reason being... It's because of limited wood. I don't feel like cutting down actual trees because also with our limited water, we got limited food, as in none. Just breakfast I ate today. And I gotta be able to make sure I can get calories and stuff like that in my body. Now, there's some knobs and stuff that we're gonna have to trim down still before we put our branches on top so we have a safe, uh, soft bed. I did put another log underneath here just to help with the support. We'll get everything right. I want to get this bed made. It'll get us off the ground. I know I'm worried about snakes. This isn't really much protection against snakes, but it gets me off the ground either way. Uh, one, 
it keeps my core temperature from dropping laying directly on the ground too with all this rain we're going to be having and we've already ran into i don't like sleeping in the water <laughs> i don't have a waterproof sleeping bag i've got a hundred percent wool cotton blanket that's it that's all i've got with me and that's another reason why our gear was so heavy guys and gals this tarp weighs a lot that wool blanket weighs a lot uh that's not my usual materials that i go camping with like i said this is what we're testing out this is what we're taking up there to that survival course there in ohio we've got to have certain materials they request they require them so we have to test these things out and it just makes my pack much more heavier so i got to get some more of these longer sticks get these laid in get our supports bridged up that way the weight's distributed get our branches and then our shelter is complete we just have to tie off and make it just more taut this is just in position right now we'll get everything really taut nice and when it does rain it runs off very good uh because of the material this canvas is made out of that's been treated we won't be collecting water to drink uh there's some type of chemical in this tarp and when I got this tarp originally, it left a yellow-orange stain all over my hands. It was real oily, greasy. This isn't an oil canvas. This is canvas is supposed to be used. It's supposed to have wax treated, but it's not. I, I washed this thing out, I don't know how many times. I lost count, just getting that dye out of it. But because of the dye, we cannot collect drinking water with this. There's no way. And we got a jet in the sky. I want it to get lost in the woods so I can get away from all that. Yeah. So, luckily though, we do have a river nearby. But our poncho, we could use as a rain collector. It, it's the material, and it's actually a clean material. It doesn't have any harsh chemicals on it. It's not treated with anything. It's just made out of a particular material. So we can always use our poncho to collect rainwater. And hopefully we'll have the opportunity to once we get the shelter built. Okay, so we had a couple issues. One, one of our uh, cameras, the chest camera, malfunction. And I can't get it to power back up. But, we're working on the bed. Alright, as you see, I've got us some nice grass. Went down to the creek bed and uh, started collecting this. And this is what we're going to be using for our base. It's actually, uh, I don't know what type of grass it is, but... We're going to keep on stacking this on, and this is going to be on top of our ribs of our bed, of a raised bed, to get us up off the ground. So, with one action camera down, that's okay, because the better quality camera, which I'm holding in my hand, and I've got in a camcorder bag, they still work. So, we'll just have to switch out a lot. A little bit extra work on me, but hey, I love being out here. So, try to get as best film footage as I can. So, we got to get some more of this. And now we've run into a new issue. This is the first issue with gear. Our hatchet. Okay, so they don't have this thing split. They just shove these little cylinder wedges in there. Unfortunately, it's uh, the head is moving so, what I believe I'm going to do is work this head off. Work on splitting this, get these shims out, and put an actual wedge down in here. Because these shims that they've got in here are not any count because, I mean, the head's loose. That's not good. So, we got to get those out, split it, put a wedge in there. I hate that. It's been working good so far. I mean, this thing's freaking sharp. I put a file on it, and I've got this sucker sharp. But if the head won't stabilize and it's bouncing around on me, it's going to wind up injuring myself. Or I'm going to wind up losing that head. Well, trial by fire or water. Uh, we... Got another rainstorm. So, not only are we testing out the tarp right now, 
which still needs to be taught. It's not exactly the way I want it, but we need to work on it. We we're also testing out the bed. Yeah, uh, it's holding my weight, so that's good news. So I was able to get all the electronics shoved up in here. Uh, I have not set up the tent yet for the electronics. There are things in here with me. I got a, my poncho draped over my main camp bag because I don't want to get anything in there wet, even though most of the stuff that I was worried about getting wet, I've got in dry bags. So because they're in dry bags, it's like my wool blanket is in a dry bag. Uh, change of clothes, that's in a dry bag. So everything else technically can get wet. Rope. Uh, my fire kit is in a aluminum housing uh, box. So I don't think anything will go wrong in that. And all that is is flint and steel. Should be fine. So anyway, we get to uh, wait out the rainstorm before we get to continue on. Good thing about Florida, usually they're pretty quick. Uh, anywhere from 10, five minutes, 10 minutes to, you know, hours. It just depends. I believe these are just gonna be real quick ones because I can see out in the distance, clear skies. So because I see clear skies, that's a good thing. Uh, in case you're wondering, I've got these uh, lanyards tied off on our main ridge line that was actually designed for when I go to the Pathfinder course they have their tarps laid out differently than what I've got right now and they use these for the um, toggles and you know a long one to tie a lantern off I do have a lantern here so we can film at night right here this is one of our solar lanterns it's got a hand crank battery backup solar the thing's freaking amazing I got that for uh, Father's Day this year. I had one originally, did a review on it on my YouTube channel, and loved it, but I lost it. I actually left it at a campsite one time. Sucks. It was about $40. So my wife got that for me for um, Father's Day. I look, I'm looking forward to uh, using it. I love this thing. It's got, a, like I said, LEDs. It's got a hand crank on it. Hand crank works very well. So, this shelter right here is not really designed for sitting up in, because I got everything low, and I got it low for a reason. I don't want a lot of wind picking up underneath this thing, and down here in Florida, the rain can go sideways. It seems like the rain's coming up from the ground half the time. So having my tarp low to the ground gives me the ability to withstand a lot of high winds and less splashback from rain. That's why we have it this way. I am going to get the rest of these stuff pulled out tighter because once this thing got wet it started to sag in on me so I do hear that the rain is stopping which is good that means I gotta get back to work all right so now we've got the easiest shelter ever I've ever put up uh, we got our tent set up for all of our camera gear so that will keep everything all nice and dry and everything we have to set up our trail cams and our other cameras here in a minute um, we got some more nasty clouds looking so we're gonna seal this up this way all of our camera gear stay safe because if it's not on film it didn't happen I just got my rain poncho up there right now. I was gonna try to dry it out, but looks like we got more rain coming. Now, what we need to do, besides charge up our battery banks for our cameras, start collecting water, because we've got to get a fire going so we can drink water. Now, for this, oh, I brought along two two-liter bottles. They're empty we got to fill one up and that way when we boil it off we can pour it in the other one for storage um, I don't like collecting and pouring back in the same bottle because if there is a bacteria in the water and you collect it in one and pour clean water back into it odds are the bacteria is still in there so that's why I use a two bottle system so we need to hit the creek 
Okay, so we got our two liter and we are heading down the embankment. Down to the creek. Like I said before, you gotta watch out. Snakes and things like that. Because they love areas like this. I don't like getting this close to this water edge. Okay, so we got our tasty water there. There's all kind of things floating in there. Yummy. Now we could have used a handkerchief or the shamog I've got to help filter out the water before it went in. Or we could filter it before we put it in our pot to boil. I think that's what we're going to wind up doing. Because that right there does not look very tasty to me. I don't know about you. I don't think there's all kind of bacteria in that. I mean, we got down trees. This is gator territory. Gators like to uh, put dead carcasses in the water. So, um, yeah, I'm not really thirsty right now. All right, guys, we've got a lot of thunder up ahead. Um, we had sporadic showers and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we got our shelter in place. We've got our tent for our camera gear. Right now, I'm trying to break up firewood and get it up off the ground. I got some large logs here, and the firewood's a little iffy. Uh, some of this stuff is wet. So, I'm still working on classification, breaking things down, smaller sizes versus larger sizes, and I've got my tarp, which we will uh, cover up this. Having this up off the ground is going to help a lot on keeping much of this wood dry. So, when we do catch a break, because I've got to boil water, that water is just disgusting, but I need fire to do it. So, before you start making coals and stuff like that, Best thing to do is start getting you wood supply. Get it all broke down, get your bird's nest made, and then try to make your fire. Go ahead and get your wood. Um, I got all kind of stuff laying around here. I'm collecting it all up. And then when I'm ready, we'll try the bow drill. I don't think it's gonna work because everything is damp out here. I mean, everything is wet. Now, if I get a dry enough bird's nest created, I can use the ferro rod and I'll be able to get a fire going and I can use this wood. But as far as using the bow drill, I just don't have much hope for it. In survival, there's never a dull moment. Every time you think you have time to sit down and rest, you either have to collect water or you're collecting up firewood. This is a Well, I can definitely say I'm glad I made the decision to put up the shelter first before anything else because this is the fourth rainstorm that has blown in. How long it lasts, I don't know. But having a shelter is freaking awesome. All right, so I do have the wood. I don't know if you can see the tarp over there. I mean the uh, poncho. I got a wood stored there underneath the poncho. That bed works freaking amazing.
nice and dry, dryish. Now what I need to do is find material to make a bird's nest. Now there's all kind of different things out here. Check this out. See this bark? Bark like this could be used about as long as I can pull it in strips. A yellow jacket. Personally, I prefer cedar over everything. But instead of pulling from that live tree, I want to find some uh, stuff that's dead. Okay, like I got that material down there. That's dead. All that stuff there is dead. If I can remove the bark or the inner parts and process it, and a lot of it like that right there. There we go. Material like this and a lot of it, I can make a bird's nest. And that we can use to start a fire. Every time I hear that wind blowing, it's telling me that the storm's getting closer. So I was actually over here looking for bird nest material and I found a possible food. All right, let me get in here. Mushroom. Now, I don't know jack about mushrooms. I'll tell you this much. If you have not been trained to cultivate mushrooms in the wild and know which one you can eat and which one you can't, and you haven't been trained by somebody, not reading a book, not looking at a picture in a book, you haven't been trained, skip it don't mess around with it uh they look to me they look way too similar and, and the plant life and stuff the mushroom the fungus whatever i don't i don't take a chance i go after things i i know is edible uh berries nuts some plants but when it comes to mushrooms i don't mess with it's just um bad idea but since i was out here looking for material for a bird's nest, I came across this. A downed tree. Oh yeah. Now, I've got a lot of this material here. But most of it's wet. But, now I'm getting some drier material. I can start getting some of this dry material. Minus the wet stuff. And we can actually probably, <laughs> maybe I should say probably, make a fire with that. But there's all kind of washed out areas that has a lot of dry material still in here that's been hidden. You just got to look out and make sure that you don't grab hold of a snake. But uh, there's all kind of stuff out here. You just got to take the time to look for it. All this material here, before I stick my hand down there, I'm going to look around. And here comes the rain again. And right now, we're using my poncho to secure our firewood. So it means I'm fixing to get wet out here. So we're heading back. And uh, we're going to get to our shelter. There's just no sense of getting wet out here and run a chance of any type of hypothermia. We'll put that bit of firewood in there. And we will get back in our shelter. Oh yeah. Snug as a bug. At least I'm dry. So I'm gonna move a couple of our items out of the way so they don't break anything. Alright. Oh, Way back. Oh yeah. Very nice. So, I do have our dry bags. Our dry bags, we got two dry bags. One has our 100% wool blanket, and the other dry bag has some a change of clothes that I brought out here with me. That's all gear I've taken with me. So, the clothes bag is actually going to do pretty good as a pillow. 
because if I don't have my head propped, I snore. It's just, it's nothing nice. I mean, either I scare away the bears or I draw them in. I don't know yet. All right, so I'm just gonna hang out here till the rain stops, and then we're gonna try to find us some uh, bird's nest material so we can still have a fire tonight because I'm running low on water right now. It's been 90 degrees. Well, it fluctuates. I'm not gonna sit there and say it's 90 degrees all day long. It fluctuates. When this rain comes in, it cools down, then it gets so freaking humid hot, it's horrible. But I'm running out of water, drinkable water. We got a two liter full of water. My canteen, I might have a quarter of a quart left. Not good. I'll be all right until tonight, but I've got to make sure I get a fire going so I can't go long without water, especially sweating. All right, so my ideal tinder bundle, a bird's nest, comes from cedar. And that's what I'm looking for out here. But if I was a mushroom man, I'd have uh, more dinner. Again, I've got no clue. That's one of the uh, skill sets I never picked up, mainly because I got discouraged from books and photos. Everything looked the same. Keep my eyes open. I got a lot of dry twigs over here. Dry branches. Looks like the canopy has kept most of this dry. So I'll come back and move all this to camp. Put underneath a poncho. That's a possibility I might be able to classify some of that wood down and make a bundle out of that. But I was really hoping for a cedar tree out here. Not finding any. Keep on looking at this old swampy area here. I've been out here a couple times now, seen frogs jump, but they've been small frogs, not the good sized frogs that should be gigging. Now, right there, that might be a prime candidate. There's a down tree right there. Let's go check that out, see if we got access down there. Keep my eyes open for uh, moccasins because this is their territory here. Also, we've got some material down here. It's possible we'll collect some of that too. It's possible to make a nest out of that. It's just a lot more work. But I gotta get get on something because um well I don't want to get on something. Not out here. I gotta get something done. We gotta have fire. I got my fire steel, flint and fire steel. I got a ferro rod so I can make a fire. All right, let's check out this material. Sometimes you have snakes up in this stuff hanging out, so just be careful. Black widows, scorpions also like this stuff. All right, some of this is dry, dry ish. Some of it's damp. Breaking off the damp stuff. I think I can classify this down. Dry it out with friction. That's the main thing. Drying it out with friction. I think we can get a, get a nest built out of this. So I would like to have crawfish. That'd be great. Alright, let's head back to camp.
Okay, so here comes the rain again. Having to work in spurts trying to find dry material to uh, start a fire with. I'm actually going to come back. I'm going to get this stuff in the shelter area so I can process it. I'm going to get this other dry material before it really starts coming down on us. So, it looks like fire is not going to happen right now. And like I said, we're almost out of drinking water. I've got this empty two liter that we're going to put the purified water in. And I don't know, maybe I just got caught up in survival because I sat down and I was looking at all the water building up on my firewood that I put my poncho on as a freshwater rain collector. I was so focused on making fire to purify water. This is one of the simplest means right here. Now, is this the end all be all means? No, but it is a means to collect water. How much water can I collect? I'm not sure. Will I get wet? Yeah, I will. Because I'm using my poncho as a tarp. But when I was building the uh, structure over there, we were talking about how my actual tarp for the structure, the shelter, I couldn't use because of the chemicals in it. No chemicals. We can collect rainwater. <sighs> Thank God. I was uh, starting to sweat that. So I had to walk many miles in. And I also had to do many miles out. Would I attempt drinking the water straight? In a survival situation, I would probably backtrack to where I saw that clear ground spring coming up that we filmed. That's probably what I'd do. I wouldn't drink it straight out of this, this river. I'd go back to where I saw the water coming out of the ground. Now that's about an hour hike out of here. Probably go faster with no gear on. But we're gonna wait for our rain to start collecting. And when it does, we'll collect drinking water. Now while it's raining guys, we have uh, all this bark and stuff that we pulled I'm taking my knife carefully, mind you, so I don't want to cut myself. And I'm peeling out the inner bark, the driest parts. It leaves a lot of dry fibers. And I'm taking my knife, and I am scraping them out, and I am collecting them on these leaves. The reason being is this is going to be part of my bird's nest. Everything's wet out here, like I said. And while our poncho is collecting rainwater, we still need fire. Okay, we need fire for cooking food. Need fire for purifying water. So we've got to have a way of creating some dry tinder so we can catch a coal. So that's what we're doing. I use this method outside Dunsmere. I was a train rider for a year and a half. Freight train, an actual hobo. And I jumped off a train that had broke down outside Mount Shasta. And it was snowing. I'd been on that train for about, I believe it was three days. It's been a while. Freezing to death up there in that snow. Those boxcars, they're not, um, they're not heated. So, I made the decision to jump off and get a fire going. Turns out my big lighter had broke. And I was screwed. I did carry a uh, magnesium fire starter on me. But everything I tried to start a fire with was either encased in ice or wet from snow. I had found some dead trees and I took the bark off. The inside was a lot drier. Now the finer you get this material, the easier it is to use friction to dry it out. So that's what we're working with here. We're going to get a big bundle of this, dry it out as much as possible. And I don't have a magnesium fire starter with me, but I've already showed this. I do have a ferro rod. That's the one I picked up from Black Scout Survival. In it, I have char cloth. Char cloth already made up. It has a nice little uh, canister on top that you could put things in. 
So why leave it empty? I am a prepper. I believe in being prepared. So <laughs> if you're being prepared, why didn't you bring a lighter? Uh, so I'm not allowed to have a lighter in the Pathfinder course. That's why. So when I start getting this darker material on this bark, it's time to set it off to the side because that's getting to uh, some wet material. Now this part of the bark is a little bit more fibrous. I'm going to keep that as much as possible, so I'm going to shred it down. I don't want to destroy that. So I'm going to set that over there. And we're going to get another piece. Test it out. That old black stuff there, that's that's way too much moisture. So we're going to get discard that. Anything with too much moisture, we're getting rid of. We take our time with our knife and just slowly skin it out. Alright, this one here, too much moisture in that one. So we're tossing that. And another larger piece right here. Break that open. And this is basically what you're doing for survival. You're taking your time and you're getting material when you don't have anything to work with. And please don't cut yourself. You should never cut towards you. Um, true, but sometimes you have to cut towards yourself because the material you're holding is too small. But you really want to uh, cut away from you. You don't really, you never want to cut yourself. In a survival situation. It's a lot of wetness in that one. So I'm gonna to toss that off to the side. This is good material here. We'll keep that. And we'll just keep working on our bundles and just keep adding material. And then when we go to dry this out, I got a bunch of these broad leaves. I'm gonna set it out so we can capture it, and we're just gonna cause friction like this right here. And dry this stuff out as much as possible and we're just going to keep capturing it as you see it's falling everywhere and we're just going to keep doing that get the moisture out friction will work it's no different than using a bow drill or a fire plow you're causing friction you're drying it out you're causing heat and that's what we're going to be working on now it's not like the rain has laid off just a little bit and we need to check our poncho and collect whatever fresh water we got. Cause I'm thirsty. All right. Doesn't look like much, does it? Just beads here, beads there. But they are starting to pile up. I'm sure we got some down in there too as well. I turned the neck of that. We do. I swallow. So what we need to do is we're going to raise our poncho up so we can collect it try to shake it and get it in position so i'm going to set the camera over here without losing too much water from our up uh, yep we did lose a lot right there it's a trial and error so we're going to collect this way and not lose the water that we've already got stored and we're just going to shake it Try to get as much of it in that headgear piece as we can. All right. Grab the camera. So we got more water. We're going to collect that. And then we're going to drink it. Never thought I'd be happy here in thunderstorms while I'm camping. 
but it is producing us drinkable water. So because of that, I'm actually happy. Now this is, it's got bark from the trees. I can deal with that. Now, does it have impurities from air pollution? Of course it does. But I'd rather drink the impurities in the air pollution than what's in that river. Alright, I'm going to set this up so we can catch more rainwater. Uh, if we get enough of it, I'll probably just go ahead and use my uh, Shemog and run it through just to catch the bark material stuff. So we're not drinking and chewing on that. But even a little wood, it ain't going to hurt anybody. And while I wasn't really brainstorming, I forgot we got our cookware. This is our camp pot that we are going to be taking with us to that course. When I went to go fill the two liter bottle, I was running into some difficulties. This is wide mouth. Much easier to collect our rainwater. Much easier. So, missed an opportunity. Uh, I was over here watching the rainwater collect. By the way, our new stages for our rainwater here. Not even a liter yet, but it's coming along. Big issue. While I was over there messing with that, had a seven foot black snake go right through my camp. And I did not have a snake stick. I could have thrown my hatchet, which I'm not really sure is going to make it on this trip because the head is really getting loose. I don't catch snakes by my hand. I've been bitten a couple times. I just don't do it. Usually I hold them down with a stick, then I lop off their head. While I was sitting there trying to figure out how I'm going to get this sucker, because it surprised me, it came right through camp. Um, they left. So, because of this missed opportunity, I'm heading back out, and I am going to go get me a snake stick. Just a long stick that's sturdy enough that I can pin a snake down so I can take off its head. I should have already had one. Um... The rainstorms that keep on coming in here like every half hour has kind of slowed down my progress in camp. And I got complacent. And because I did, I missed an opportunity. So, seven foot black snake. Doesn't sound like much food. It's actually quite a bit of food. But what I was going to use the snake or the rest of the snake for would have yielded in a lot more food intestines like I said we got that spot with crawfish those crawfish I won't so I'd have to make some type of fish basket I'm just gonna make something to catch crawfish with but I need bait So, we're not going to let that happen again. I got me a big stick. It's going to work out perfect. Now, if I get the opportunity again, which I will, uh, seems like seems like there's more things moving around in the woods. I've been hearing more noises. So, um, maybe this evening I'll get hold of something. Until then, cross your fingers. All right, so it looks like we've got a break in our weather, thankfully. Uh, we're going to take down our poncho, get to our firewood, and we'll see if we can't get some fire going. I've got a lot of water from the creek. We've got some rainwater mixed up in there. 
we just got to uh, start purifying some water. So to do that, we need uh, fire. Now I'm not going to take this poncho all the way down, mainly because I don't want to lose our firewood to the rain. So we're just going to string it up off the ground in this tree. That way we still have access to it. If it comes raining again, if it comes raining again, we can just grab it, put it back up, string it back up exactly where we have everything else, and we can start collecting rainwater again. So, my hands are now wet, and I gotta go get our tinder pile. Awesome. Okay, so we got our magnesium, I mean, I'm sorry, our ferro rod. So our ferro rod here. We're going to attempt to get our bundle going. Humidity is up and everything is wet. Now, I got some bark and stuff in here all mixed up. We're going to see if we can get this stuff going. All right, that's a no-go, but I've got char cloth. This is uh, usually made out of cotton fiber. You take sheets of cotton cloth and you char it. You put it in a tin and stuff like that. And what it does is it catches an ember so you can start your fires. I'm gonna put this other piece back in here because we might still need it. If this rain keeps on, it's going to be a rough week. All right. Let me get a spark on this. Okay, we've got a couple sparks going here. Let me get this in here. Oh, please keep burning. Okay, more twigs.
Jeez. Okay, I was getting nervous. Because everything is just so damp and wet out here. I've never had that much difficulty with uh, barrel rod, char cloth. Even my char cloth seemed like it had some moisture in it or something. Everything just is wet. That's all there is to it. Anyway, just got to keep the fire going and keep feeding it. We'll be boiling water before we know it. Maybe. Now, I left this on the ground. Not cool. Uh, I don't want to lose my fire starter. I mean, I got different types of fire starters with us. But I was watching, I forgot what season it was, uh, Alone. And a YouTuber named Joe, he was out there. Big time bushcraft guy. He lost his fire starter and he had to call it. If that wouldn't have happened, I really think that he would have done great in that show. So I keep track of that's a reminder for me to always keep track of my fire starters. It was a simple mistake and it cost him. So I really hate that happen because I really think he could win the distance. I really do. Alright, so let me concentrate on the fire so we can get it built up and Start blowing some water. So, the fire is looking much better. Besides purifying our water, and I wish that we would have had that snake. Especially now that we've got a fire. Uh, but I did bring me some holders. I only got a couple. I'm going to enjoy a cup of coffee. That's what I'm going to do. As soon as I pull up some water. The little things in life, right? Alright, so we've got our camp pot. This is a solo stove. Uh, this was actually recommended by another YouTuber. And uh, they actually completed the Pathfinder course. And this is the one I got. It's a 60 ounce container. Now we're going to take our rainwater that we have collected. We're just going to go ahead and purify it since we got a fire going, may as well. So we're going to put our water in our pot. It's even got a dinge color. Everything from dust particles. I mean, I ran it through our shamog just to try to get all the fil all the trash out of it as much as possible. I got a little, little room for bowl. So we're going to make a little room here for our stove. It's actually just a fancy name for a pot. I'm going to take this lid off because it's got a rubber guard on it. I don't want to melt that. All right. Now we'll just keep the fire going. We'll boil this off. Now that might be a heat treated guard. I'm not sure. I mean, why would you put rubber on there if it's not fireproof, right? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll keep an eye on it. If it starts melting, we know I need to cut it off. Oh, that's a hot cup of coffee. All right, so we got more water boiling. We're going to be boiling all of our water. But you already see my wood stack. It's not going to make it through the night. Now, I want to keep it going, and this way I can protect my coals in case we do get stupid rain, which I know we will. So in survival, you got to be proactive. You can't be complacent. Yeah. A cup of coffee's great, but I gotta get more wood. And that's the thing, if I want to have fire, if I catch fish, crawfish, 
get a snake, a raccoon, whatever. See, we still got to set up uh, our traps, snares, deadfalls. We still got to do all that stuff because we need food. I burned up a lot of calories out here today. I know I have. I already got a migraine. That's why I packed the coffee. Um, I wanted to go without water. I wanted to go without food. But I knew when I started burning out too many calories, the migraine is going to kick in. And they did. The caffeine is going to help. But it's, no, it's not a complete answer. So I can't just sit back and not do anything. I've got to get more firewood. Then i got to get my gear out. And I've got to find my snare wire, my paracord, all that stuff. And I've got to set traps. i got to set fishing hooks. I've got to fish. I've got to set up stuff for tonight. Because we're right here at a riverbank. What comes around riverbanks? Most of the time, raccoons. So, we're going for a raccoon. We're going for fish. I uh, wish I would have got that snake. That would have helped with the guts. Definitely would have brought in some other game. But if I can get fish... I can definitely get raccoon. So, let me get to work. Okay, so let's uh, recap our day since night is now upon us. Coffee? <laughs> yeah. Which is very hot. Alright, so we were able to collect rainwater. It worked in a pinch, but it wasn't something that we could rely on. Alright, we only got like a liter of rainwater throughout all the storms that we had today. Mainly it's because of the surface area. The poncho is only so, so large when you spread it out. It's a 7 foot by 5 foot, I believe it is. Anyway, so we were able to get drinkable water, but... It's not enough to sustain life long term, so we had to get fire. Now, we had trouble getting fire. Usually, dry conditions, no big deal. We got fire, but I went through every piece of char cloth I had. Everything was just too wet out here. I tried friction. We were able to get it dry enough and finally catch, but it shouldn't have took that long, but it did. We just had that much moisture in our wood. We still have moisture in our wood right now. I've got the top off of it right now. i got the uh, poncho moved over there to the tent that we have our camera equipment at. Hopefully it dries some of this wood out. I did have some stacked around the fire just trying to dry it out a little bit because all this wood is wet. It's been raining out this way nearly every day. So I've got a trail cam up. Uh, I'm fixing to break out our IR camera. That way we can have nighttime footage too. I got the trail cam up just in case something starts sneaking around the camp. Although there's no food here, I'm here. This way we can see if anything's been moving around at night. Now, speaking of moving around at night, let's talk about protection. I do not have any bear spray. The fact is, bear spray was just too expensive this week. I've got my wife some of these uh, pepper gel um, sprays. These things actually got a long range, about 18 feet. Very good 18 feet of spray. Is it the best? Well, for a person it is. I've never been sprayed by this particular spray, but I do have that with me, along with a small air horn. This is an Ozark Trail brand. This is one you get at Walmart. Now, this particular one has a screw and a, and a needle puncture to actually get this thing to work. Now, I don't know how well these things are made because I think I paid six bucks for So I've just got it tight to the puncture. If I need to use it, I'm going to crank down on it, and then we should be good to go. I hope we don't have to use this. This is going to be one of those things that um, hopefully will back off any large animal if it does come into camp. Now it should only take a brief second for me to actually tighten this down. Other than that, those are deterrents. I got our knife and I've got a hatchet that's got to be repaired when I get back home. I don't have anything to go down in the head. 
to uh, tighten up that head. Not on hand. And even if I did, I don't have any rocks to bang it in place. So we're going to take it easy on it and try to uh, not use it. It sucks because I had plans with this thing. But I'm glad it happened here and not the course. The course, I would have been really upset. So that course wasn't cheap. And that's why, one of the reasons why we went out here to test out gear. I wanted to make sure everything was up to par. Everything works. All right, so you can see that this, see how this fire is doing. I got a lot of good cold beds there, but the wood is wet. I'm constantly having to go down there and blow in the fire just to uh, get the flames back up. Um, it's going to be a rough night keeping this thing going. I think what I'm going to do is try to dry out as much of the material behind me, and that way I have uh, dry wood for tomorrow. I'll wrap it up in the poncho. That was dry, and we won't have the issue we had earlier today trying to get a fire going. We got to have a fire to purify water. Now we've got four liters currently, four liters of water. We got a gallon. As hot as it is here, you need to be drinking a gallon a day, if not more. But fire right now is our lifeline. We have to have fire. Purify our water. Oh, and make coffee. Okay, obviously you probably can't see me. I don't have the uh, IR on. I got up because it was just so freaking hot, and I kept hearing something moving around my camp. A toad. Now, this toad is going to be used for our fishing. So, I'm going to put him up somewhere safe. I'm going to run a string up to one of these trees, shoot him up in there so I still have him until tomorrow because I don't have anything to put in type of bait. So, hate to kill a toad that I'm not going to eat. I don't eat toads. But, I'll be able to use this. Hopefully catch fish. And hopefully crawfish. Okay, so it's dark out. We got a light on right now for the uh, camera. Well, I'm out here in the dark with a knife. Well, I got my headlamp because we do get to take a headlamp with us. Um, it's starting to sprinkle again, but I got crickets everywhere, which means fishing bait. So that's what I'm doing out here right now. I am picking up some extra firewood, stuff like that while I'm out here. But the crickets are out because they are making all kind of racket. I haven't heard no cicadas. And that, that camera light is bright. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing out here. It is currently 10.30 at dark. Dark in the woods. Lost in the woods. So... Moving, didn't mean to blind y'all. Spiders, bugs, everything is game. Uh, as you guys already saw, the toad. So I did have a bag. Sorry. I got a plastic bag for my bait. I forgot. I pack hygiene, and I put all my hygiene in a plastic bag. So I sacrifice my plastic bag that holds my toothbrush and toothpaste and all that good stuff, and toilet paper, and uh, that's gonna be my bait bag for tonight. All the crickets, spiders, everything I find is going in that. And we will try our hand at fishing. It's raining again, so it probably won't do very well. Uh, but definitely going to get some fish baskets up and hopefully catch crawfish. So tomorrow I've got to manufacture some. So first thing in the morning, I mean, I'm always you're always doing something in survival. Sorry, I ain't got my shirt on. It's freaking hot out here, even in this rain. It's just muggy, Florida. You're always doing something. I'm getting bait. I hear the crickets. I'm searching for them. Um, the toad jumped in camp. I hate I kill a toad and not eating them, 
I don't like killing things unless I'm eating it. Well, I'll eat whatever eats him. Put it that way. Okay, this sucker here come flying up at me like a bat at a, you know what. I got him. Some type of big ass insect. But he's got one heck of a set of pinches on him. Don't know what he is. But he's a mean little sucker. Uh, trying to trying to freaking kill him. He's biting my freaking knife. All right. I think I got him. I got him through the head anyway. More bait. Day two, morning time. Uh, last night was rough. The frogs, toads, and everything else would not shut up till about 4 a.m. I got up at 6. But, we got bait. We actually got a couple toads last night. Crickets, some other weird bugs never seen before. So today, we'll be heading out. I am going to, uh... Probably go further west, follow the river, and see if I can't find easier access, maybe a better fishing spot. Later on today, I do need to make a fish basket and alter it a little bit so it's a uh, crawfish basket, so I don't have one of those crawfish metal meshed uh, traps, not with me. I've got some, but just not with me. So I'm going to attempt to make one. I don't know, maybe skin some bark. If I can find some uh, long leaves or something like that. Grass. Might be able to make something. We'll be able to use just toads, dinners, and stuff like that for bait. Especially for crawfish. Crawfish loves dead things. Maybe some minnows. Who knows? We'll see what the day brings. I know that... <clears throat> that river today is really moving. Kept on raining. Sheltered worked very well last night. I already got my bed roll up and everything. I put that back in its uh, dry bag. I don't want anything getting damaged. It's soaked out here. We're trying to dry out some of my clothes today. Charge up our battery banks for our cameras and everything. Because we used quite a bit last yesterday. And uh, it's just overcast a lot but this morning we got sun which is nice and a cup of coffee So, we now have the river on my left hand side. Sorry, I've got uh, yellow flies all over me out here. They're just going right through that off spray. But I want to point out these big old pine trees. That hurricane, Hurricane Michael, did some damage out here. And this river's just loaded down with it. Again, it's just hard to get to the river due to the banks it's just cliffs so we're going to attempt to go further downstream and see if we can't find a little beachhead somewhere 
you can't really get any fishing done if you can't get down to the water. Now, do you see what I see? I'm about to do something stupid. Do not do this. Do as I say, not as I do. Oh, this is a dumb idea. Set my pack down. See how slick this thing is. Got sand all over my boots. See how bad this bark is. Because if this bark rolls off of me, I'll be going into the drink. Which would suck. Yeah, I'm trying to watch my step. It's a wide uh, tree. But this bark peels so easy on these down trees. But it peels in sheets. And if I step on one of those things wrong, it's going to peel right off with me with it. All right. Now I'm running into some issues here. For example, yeah. So if I'm stepping on this stuff and it does that, not good. Okay. Jesus. These yellow flies are something fierce. I basically bathed myself in bug spray. And they're still getting me. I'm not seeing much of an access point. And I could probably sit on this log. On this tree. And try to fish. I think what we need to do is uh, focus our attention on our crawfish trap because all I'm seeing out this way is more cliffs. I hate to keep on walking. I've probably walked another mile and a half today away from camp. It's a little too far for my tail. I don't like being that far away from my camp. Not without it with me. I got survival gear in the backpack in case something was to happen. I could get to the, uh, the tent, get back to the uh, shelter where I got all the other gear stored. But, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to focus here. I mean, it's got plenty of a landing. Don't get me wrong. It's just that this bark shifts. And because it shifts, I don't want to bust my ass. Now this excursion this morning did give me an idea. Saw palmetto, broad leaf. It can be easily split and weaved. We're going to be looking for some large uh, saw palmettos, and that's what we're going to make our crawfish trap out of this. It's what we're going to weave our basket out of. So we're going to look for some large ones, and we're going to head back to camp with our supplies. Okay, oh, now that that part is over, 
set that over there. Oh, first I need to get something to drink. And then I need to go back and uh, collect those palmetto leaves so we can go and get our baskets made. Fortunately for us, I don't know if the camera's going to show it or not, our fire pit right down there. We got about a foot and a half of solid coals. I've been kicking sand over it, moving these logs out of the way, kicking sand over it just to keep the coals uh, buried. Reason being, if I can keep those coals buried and hot, later when I need to make our fire, we can. We just dig out our coals and we'll be able to get a fire going again. Everything is just wet. You gotta be smart. Picked up some rocks. They'll work as a uh, weight for the basket. I just dropped one. I gotta get some uh, vines or some very young saplings so I can build a frame for it. So that's the next part. All right, so working on the fish basket or well, the crawfish trap. Thunderstorm came rolling up um, again. So we're taking our vines and we're making coils. All right, this is gonna be the main part of our cage. And then we'll make a reverse funnel in. We'll probably make it about that long there with a reverse funnel in. We got our saplings that are actually gonna hold it together. Hope that's coming in. It'll be tied off and then we'll use the um, palmetto sawgrass, the uh, saw palmetto, and we'll weave around it. Now when we get this thing designed, we'll have to make sure it works. I am beat. I'm exhausted. The extreme heat and then the quick drop in temperature with these thunderstorms that we're getting. It's the second one today. It is 9.30. Yeah. Food. So all I'm thinking about is food while I'm doing this. It's only been a day and that's all I'm thinking about. Anyway, I'm taking my bank line, which is three braid. Um, I'm unbraiding it so I have some thinner material to work with and that's what I'm using to tie everything up with is the bank line. So the thunderstorms are still banging around. Still working on I gotta go get up back out in the rain and go get some more material so so I can actually show you what we're doing here. We got our rings of vines we're tying these uh, saplings onto it. We're gonna put some more in here. Weave our uh, palmetto through the outside. We're gonna make a smaller ring, tie off some saplings to it, palmetto it up, and that way you got your funnel coming in, and then you got your cavity here. I might leave a small hatch rig, something, I don't know yet. We'll figure out that design, or maybe have it where this here opens up with the funnel. So we can actually drop the bait in and get everything out without having to disassemble everything. So we might have the funnel in two different pieces. We might make it like that and just shove it in that end. Or that end. Either way, we got to trim. But i got to go get wet. If I'm not back in 10, call the Navy. So much water's coming down over here. Our tarp's doing great. Um, canvas tarp, doing great. Our uh, tents over there with all of our electronics seems to be doing fine. It's just a little cheap Amazon tent. Something I could just throw in the backpack for all of our film and stuff. But, yeah. Let me get back to work.
right, so we got the fish basket complete here. And the cone, unfortunately, you had to use paracord, but uh, we got our basket made. And we're gonna put our uh, bait down in this sucker. What kind of goodies? Frogs from last, I mean, toads from last night. I rip them open, let the guts flow. All right, now when you take this down. And uh, let's put it in the water. All right, so before we set this in the water, I'm going to tie some uh, bank line to it so we don't lose it because that would suck. It took too long to make. And it's got all of our bait. Sinking pretty good. Got our bank line tied. Now I'm going to tie it off on this branch over here. And we will uh, check it out in a few hours. See if uh, anything's gotten in there. So it's raining again. But the only thing to do is um, get some rain sleep. I didn't sleep much last night because I was catching bait. Just put all the wood out here. Everything's wet. I checked those coals. They're still good down the sand pit. They're still hot. But, um... Might be running a coal camp tonight. It all depends on if we get crawfish. All right, I'm gonna get some sleep. Just had a light breeze come through. It felt pretty good. Dozed off for a few minutes. Uh, as soon as this rain lets up, I know where some downed trees are. Pretty close. And I'm gonna go grub hunting. And if I'm lucky, I might come across a few snakes along the way. I'm hungry for snake. But if I get skunked on that, I might be able to get me some grubs. So, uh, I gotta get something in my stomach. My stomach's just arguing with me nonstop. It needs something in it. I usually don't lay around. 
And that's what I feel like doing. Okay, so this looks like a good spot anyway. Now, I didn't want to have to use this hatchet much because the head has that issue. But, I want to kind of get down in here and see if I can uh, find anything. like part of a palmetto bug. Okay, that was a bust. I don't know if I can flip this sucker. But we'll see. Maybe I can just roll it. Alright, we've got a lot of dry dirt underneath. I don't want any snake creeping up behind me here. Sometimes you can find earthworms down here. I'm using the back side of my knife, the spine, to dig around, see if anything moves. And we got a tiny earthworm. That is um, lunch. Try to get some of this dirt off of them. All right. Earthworms do have protein, although this is a little small one. don't have a taste other than dirt all right well that ain't gonna be jack but it's something we're lucky since that was a baby one maybe we can find some larger ones Now you guys make sure you don't tell my wife ate a worm. <laughs> uh, actually, she would not be surprised. Not at all. All right. We got some more bark material. Oh, I'm not sure what that is. 
Looks like termites. Looks like a bunch of termites. Now, I see some grubs and I see some baby snails down there. That is a grub right there. It's a small one. These are snails. Well, slugs. That's a slug. Don't eat that. So, I've always jumped up snakes in these palmettos before. Every time I get around a clump of palmettos, I always jump up something. And I'm just not getting hold of anything except for some big freaky looking mushrooms and I know nothing about mushrooms so we continue to move on so just going through checking on bark seeing if we see anything laying up in here Oh, we got a grub. You gonna take your head off there, buddy. Now I don't have to worry about getting bit by you later. Alright. Yummy. Grubs are always so freaking nasty. I always got a wah taste to them. I've never cared for bug, grubs, bugs. I'll eat them, but I don't like them. Yeah. Now the question is, could somebody survive on just uh? Trying to walk out of a location, digging through bark, eating grubs and worms. Quite possibly. Ooh. Little froggy. Um, I don't eat random frogs. I only go for the ones, the bullfrogs and stuff I can actually see in the water. I don't mess around with frogs and toads. Uh, looks like a good place to take a look. I swear I thought I saw a scorpion. We got him here. So before I came out here, I had my uh, canteen and I, I left it at the camp. But, rainwater. Which brought me attention over to this moss. Oh, lichen, reindeer moss, whatever. It uh, really doesn't have any nutritional value. It's just something to put in your gut. So there's a lot of that around here. Like I said, I don't believe there's any nutritional value in this stuff. It's just something to create, you know, make the uh, stomach pains go away when you're hungry. But after a few days without eating, the stomach pains will go away. But, it's not a good sign. 
and as you go into the next stages and it won't be too much longer you start getting to starvation sorry guys i keep on dipping out and stuff because i'm trying to take a look at stuff that is a lizard don't mess with lizards either especially when they're colored Mosquitoes are just so freaking bad out here. I mean, it's raining right now. I'm still swatting mosquitoes. Freaking crazy. Very interesting. I don't know if you can see that. All that dust. That's wood. Something is eating at this. Or it could be a woodpecker could be some type of grub could be carpenter bees carpenter bees they'll uh, make sawdust but man that's a lot of it it's all the way even on the back side whoa I've been digging over here that's weird Anyway, I thought it was kind of neat. I probably should get back to camp and get out of this rain. I'm not wearing my poncho. I don't think I'm going to be seeing much game out here. I've well, got snares and stuff set up. Got a couple traps, but I'm not hearing anything really move out here. Seeing that one snake. I hate I missed them, but oh well. Don't worry guys, I'm not going to eat the butterfly. Our frogs and stuff are still in there. We'll toss it back out. I'll just be too early. nothing good thing we had a belly full of grubs hey it may have only been a few grubs uh, to choke down but there's still something going in my body granted it's not enough to live off of but it was better than nothing now the amount of calories it took to collect due to all the walking and stuff. Well, that there's a damned if you do and damned if you don't situation. Personally, I say keep on looking for food in such situations. But be careful where you go at. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't go down in there 
unless I was planning on some close quarter snake fighting. But, I'm not against it either. Alright, let's get back up here. Raining again. Um, but this poncho has been a lifesaver. We've been able to keep firewood dry. We've been able to collect drinking water with it. And of course, out of the elements with it. Uh, I don't think the rain's going to last much. You know, this sporadic rainstorm will be gone here in another 15 minutes. But, I try to keep the wood as dry as possible. For as long as possible. Okay guys, I was just coming down here to check the crawfish trap and something crashed about 30 yards up there. see any trails as far as game trail or anything could just be dead trees falling branches been raining a lot I didn't hear it walk through either so might just be a branch all right let's check out our trap. Oh, we got minnows. The bottom fell out. We got minnows. The bottom fell out of a trap. We've got a couple in here. We got a lot in here. We've got uh we got food. We got quite a bit in here. Alright. Probably make a stew or something with them. Like I said, we're just going to boil them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we're just going to boil them up for now, but we're going to hold off till this evening. I'm going to put some water in here so they don't get all funky. Um, we're going to hold off till this evening and maybe get some crawfish with it. And then we just boil it all up together. So till then, we'll save it right here. Finally, sunlight. Now, it is currently 520. Sunlight's not gonna last long. At least it, uh, it's drying out some things a little bit. We're trying to get the charging systems charged up for the cameras and stuff. 
using solar. Yeah, I didn't think that one through, but uh, as soon as it starts cooling off a little bit, we'll get uh, dinner started. Oh yeah, they've been eating me up. I saw um, bugs. Got me on this backside too. They've only got my backside. That's where my feet hang off the bed, and that's where they've been getting. They've been going right up my pant leg and nailing the crap out of me. All right, guys. So, oh, yeah. Another night down. Another day down. Mm. Take my headlamp off. So, we were skunked on the uh, frog legs tonight. Going out there. The ones I did see were just too far off. I'd have to get in the water and. Um, it wasn't worth the risk. I just now got my boots dry. So, and even if I got in the water, there was no guarantee I was going to get them. That's all right. It's uh, another day tomorrow. I have to check. Uh, we got two deadfalls. I got to get checked. I got one out there in that pine forest we're at earlier today. And we got one past the uh, swamp area here. We check that. We'll see if we got anything in that. We got a couple snares up. I'm not really sure how well they're going to do because I haven't heard anything moving around much out here. But we'll check them anyway. You know, check them at least once a day. If there's a lot of predators in the area, though, I would have to check them every few hours. You know, not right on them, just enough where I can see them. Uh, like if we had a lot of wolves and foxes, we'd have to check that all the time. Because they'll come steal your your, uh, your catch real quick. But, I mean, there might be some coyotes around here. But I haven't even heard them holler much. The last time I was out here in this area... I did some camping, and I really didn't see much of anything. Um, I heard cicadas and stuff. I don't even think I even heard a raccoon. I was hoping for one of them. I got plenty of stuff set up to catch one. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Um, see if the deadfall got one or if the snare got one. The only thing about our snares, I like using snare wire, even with the spring traps. Uh, because of course, you're not allowed to bring snare wire, I had to make it out of a 550 paracord. Pull the inner strands out for the actual snare piece, and the rest of the cable, just, um, 550 paracord. I don't like using that because if you don't snare the animal correctly, or you get a bad snare, he can chew right through the rope and gone compared to a um, snare wire he can't chew through it or he'll have a hard time trying to chew through it so we only brought the gear that we we're going to be able to take up there and that's what we got to work with unfortunately our hunting and fishing isn't doing so good We've had a lot of rain I'm hungry very hungry this is the end of day two I'm hungry haven't had enough calories coming in I'm real real freaking tired my mind's scatterbrained I find myself drifting off while I'm doing something when I should be paying attention to something the good news is our tarp is doing great um this thing is going to be freaking heavy when I go to break down camp on Thursday. I mean, it's, it's drying out right now because we haven't had a rainstorm for several hours. But this canvas, it just gets real heavy. So I know we're going to be 
having some nasty weather up in Ohio, and part of that course, you got to ditch your backpack and use your tarp to wrap up everything and make a wooden frame backpack, an external frame. And you use your tarp to wrap up all your supplies and strap it down. So this thing here, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they didn't ask for us to uh, get the very large one. This one here is a 6x8, I believe it was. Because if I'd have got a bigger one, man, that would have been like 20 pounds extra on my back. I don't, I don't know how much this thing weighs as far as uh, when it's wet. I think it was like 6, 7 pounds dry. So I'm going to say triple that if it's wet. Yeah, something like that. But, like I said, I'm going to get some shut eye. So I'll see you in the morning. Oh, like my pillow? That's our dry bag. I don't think I showed that. That's one of our dry bags. We've got two. One we keep our bedroll in, the other one we keep clothes in. So, those are my clothes that were on the line. I went and pulled them off and uh, stuck them in this so I got me a nice pillow. It does help. It really does. Uh, day three. I overslept. It's uh, 10 15. We had uh, thunderstorms roll in last night, early this morning. As soon as daybreak came in, well, since I was nice and dry here, I didn't feel like getting up and playing around in the rainstorm. So I laid here. Oh, almost four hours have passed. I'm just exhausted. I don't have much energy. Between lack of food, it's just the heat. When these storms go by, the sun opens up. The clouds open up and the sun comes out. And it just gets like a greenhouse effect out here. It gets so, so hot. It just zaps you. The energy zaps you. Uh, so I figured out what chewed up my legs as far as um, my bites. All those bites. Usually at night time, I take my socks off, let my feet air dry. Well, in the middle of the night, I have to get up and use the bathroom, go urinate. Like I said, I haven't had any problem urinating. So I know everything's working good there. But I walk barefoot I'm a little ways out of camp there, so I'm not urinating in, inside my camp. And I felt it last night. I was getting bit. Sand fleas. We got sand everywhere. This the sand's wet, damp, and I felt them. I felt them just tear me up while I was walking. Got my light on and everything, and yeah, it was sand fleas. That's what's uh, been eating me up. Other than that, I've, I've been doing okay with the bugs and stuff, with uh, the bug spray and everything, but sand fleas. And my legs are killing me. They are definitely, uh, I, I can deal with the itching part. It's just the swelling. Well, our headlamp is still going good. We only, we've only had that one battery in here. And I've been using it every night. So for two nights now, it's held up. We have spare batteries. I ordered some spare batteries. So when we go up to the course, they said take a headlamp and spare batteries. 
Now this is the Olight. This is the uh, the Mini that they have. It works very well. It's got different modes and stuff on. This thing is small and lightweight. I like flashlights. Um, are there other headlamps out there that work great? Of course there are. This one here we did a review on a while back, and it's the same one. The only thing I don't like is this big old headpiece. It's designed Velcro. You can you put it on something. Like if you got a shirt that has a patch. But it still weighs so much as I was pulling on your shirt. And it's so wide, no matter how you put this thing on your headband, I mean, it's not all there. It's still got all that room. And that Velcro, if you're just putting it right on your head like I usually do, if I don't have my hat on, that Velcro irritates your forehead and you break out. I use my headlamp all the time, even at the house. But uh, so far, the gear's doing good. We had an issue with the hatchet. I've got some shims and stuff at the house. When I get back home, I'll, I'll repair those. I'll repair that. And everything else seems to be doing very well. So right fast, I was talking about this little air horn the other day. I said, you know, just screw it down. I finished screwing it down to puncture. I read the instructions on it. Actually, screw it all the way down. Now it's ready. When you mash that, it just it doesn't allow you to do it multiple times. When you mash that, it punctures the canister and just releases a long blast air horn. Uh, so I'm going to get a couple more of these just to have in my, my pack. They're lightweight, but when you mash it, it continues. So I'm, I was wrong in giving the description of how to use this thing before. I actually read the instructions on the back. So, I'm glad I didn't go test it, because uh, then I'd have used it all, and when I needed it, I wouldn't have it. So, along with our rainstorm, we've got to dry our clothes back out. Yeah, so I'm rocking shorts today. We do have our solar system sitting in the sun. Now, one of the things I've got to do today... Collect more drinking water. It's a never-ending thing. It's constantly going to get water. Humidity, heat's so bad down here. You're drinking a lot of water. Um, I don't think one has really got a chance of survival down here without a water source. I know they say it's up to three days without water. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think many people is going to make it more than more than that, or up to three days down here Now, uh, water level is still pretty high up here, as far as uh, the creek bed, but it doesn't look as muddy as it's been, so that'll save us on our filtration. See, that's been one of the worst thing about this creek, as far as getting water, is that usually if I leave this, this pail this camp pot and let it sit I get a whole bunch of sediment dirt sand debris and stuff like that set on the bottom which makes it easier to start filtering out my water but all I have is the uh, t-shirt my app uh, my shamag that's all I have to filter out before we boil but this makes it much easier means that it's a little bit clearer today I don't know if you can see how fast that current's moving. That's uh, 
it's tempting to go for a swim but you see how these banks are almost straight cliffs that's also what's in this water it's not a nice sandy bottom that you can just walk out to there's a a lot wrong as far as I mean right here it's just a it's just a drop off it's not a sandy bottom you can walk out to you you're gonna be crawling back in just to get back onto the bank So, as fast as this is going, if you're out there swimming, I won't be able to swim directly across that side. I'll be down there. That's how fast that current's moving. And then I'll be clawing at the riverbank, trying to get back up. Not a good idea. It's just moving too fast. All right, so right now I'm packing out one of our dry bags. Reason being, we're gonna go on a little excursion. I want to try to get some fishing done. Basically, I got a small survival fishing kit here. Got strings, hooks, lures. Well, only one type of lure. A little shrimp lure. Looks like a shrimp. Hooks, leaders, swivels. Oh, nine yards. String. I gotta get some food. Those minnows. We have the. Well, I'm not going to say they're great. They're actually nasty tasting. Um, we've got to get food. So, I've been studying the creek from my vantage point. It looks like it makes a right-hand turn. And in that turn, it's a backwash swirl against one of the banks. Now, to get to it, I've got to go out where we got our crawfish trap out there. Go around that swampy area, and it should put me on the back side. Worst case scenario, we come across a snake, which would be a good case scenario for us because I don't mind eating snake. But right now I got some water boiling because I got to fill up the canteen and uh, bring water with us because we might be there for a while. I got extra batteries for the cameras, just to get everything all strapped on, and uh, we'll head out. All right, so like I said, the river cuts off to the right. But back here, we got a back swirl and steady water. That's probably gonna be our best bet. Now there is a cliff embankment over there that I see, but it is sloping. Over in that direction is a swamp area. So we're gonna circle around and come down here. We'll give it a shot. Okay, so, I either have the mountain, <laughs> why is there a hill here, no idea, or I cross this little bit of water through here to get to the other side, A, B. It's gonna be dumb. But I think we're gonna go with B. Alright. I was thinking about just walking through. But I don't know how mucky that stuff is. I want to go knee deep to waist deep. I got a tree that goes all the way across. 
all the way across. It's that big one right there. That's stupid stuff I do sometimes. I don't recommend this for anybody. Keep your feet on ground. But I'm going for it. Okay, that thing as springy as can be, I actually thought I was going to go in a couple times. Okay, so that's got that part of the journey done. Going up another hill. And... Yes. Oh, check this out. We've got another spring or a land drainage. Man, this, this ground is soft. I'm sinking in it. Check that out. This All this ground is sinking with me on it. I can feel the whole ground shift. Couple reasons that could be sinkhole or could be some dead trees that uh, trees that fell down and are decaying and I just walked over top of them. Alright, first thing we need to do is check out for snakes. Before we start playing around in here. Looks pretty clear. You guys see that? This is probably really good drinking water. Um, I don't drink anything unless I boil it. Odds are, I could drink this water. It's coming out of a rock base. That's rock in there. But I don't know if this is just from a stream further up that is draining. I want to say it's a spring. But it could be runoff from a stream. So because of this, we're not going to drink it. Not without bowling.
Now back to our main objective here. Walk up on this little beachhead. Watching for the slithering creatures. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We've got low current here. I could either go on that side of trees over there and try to fish, or try it right here. Well, that was a bust. We've actually got to head back to camp. We were out here for about two hours trying to do some hand fishing. No luck, but I don't know if you guys can see that in a tree line with a white fluffy clouds are up top. Look down below it. Thunderstorms are back. Now we've got to get across this swamp and back to camp, which isn't too far. That big old tree over there is actually camp. I can see the clothesline for our clothes. I've got to get back to camp. I've got to get this clothes down. It's just been a horrible trip as far as trying to find food other than grubs, worms, and minnows to trying to stay dry. So watch my step here because you know how that goes. Oh, low bridge. really frustrated at myself this is the second snake I've missed I'm not concentrating I'm not focusing three days now with minimum of eating right now I'm out here hunting up grubs I still got dirt in my teeth Set my stick down, 
started cutting some bark out. And just a few feet away was a black snake. And then when I realized it was there, I go to get my stick and he takes off and I couldn't get to him. Lack of food does have an effect. Thankfully, I'm hydrated. That's a good thing. Man, that sucks. Well, like I said, we lost the uh, opportunity on the snake. Back to eating bugs. Grasshopper. I hit him with my stick. I don't like eating the guts out of these things because they're freaking grasshoppers nasty. You can fry them up and they're not that bad. But I try to uh, pull the head off, pull the guts out before I start munching down. Oh yeah, there's a lot of grasshoppers around here, so that's a plus. So between grasshoppers, grubs, earthworm, and that reindeer moss, that lichen, minnows, which we haven't caught any new minnows, we didn't caught, catch any crawfish. Uh, that's been our diet out here. Water. That's it. It's been rough. Um, like I said, though, we were just taking our gear out and testing it out. Future outdoor survival shows we'll be doing. We'll be bringing bait. I mean, why would you go out to the woods without some type of bait? But, to keep it real, you really need to catch your own bait and set your traps and stuff like that, to be honest. I mean, really. As far as any predators moving around, meat eaters, I'm not seeing anything move around. Uh, no raccoon tracks, no possum tracks. Kind of hard to tell by the river. Because uh, you can't get down to the riverbank. Everything's cliffs. Except for that spot we go get water at. The only prints that are over there is my own boot print. So nothing large is moving around. I haven't seen any squirrels in the trees. Which I've also noticed that in this entire area. Ever since Hurricane Michael came through I noticed that the squirrel population is not what it used to be. In this part of Florida. It's just trees are snapped and down. They've either moved on or were exterminated. Odds are they moved on. But you start taking things out of the food chain, squirrels, things like that, that stay in these trees, and you move them, your other animals move with them. They don't stay in spots that don't have much food. Plenty of bird. A lot of lizards around here. I'm not sure about eating lizards. I've, I've never eaten lizard. I usually stay away from animals that are brightly colored because usually it's a warning system. I've seen a cat eat a lizard, sat there and foamed out the mouth for like an hour and a half. So uh, I think I'm going to skip on the lizards. I'll, I'll stick to the dirt tasting grubs. Actually, grubs taste worse than dirt. They're, they're horrible. Get a large enough one, they could probably roast them up. So, it's in the afternoon on our third day. Uh, sun's out finally. The thunderstorm has moved on. And it's just real humid. I'm sitting there thinking, though. All my life I've been outdoors, for the most part. Always been out in the woods. Hunt, fish, survival. 
Here on this YouTube channel, I've always taught prepping and the need to prep. I've seen a lot of people comment, well, I just run to the woods. I got mad skills. I've been surviving on grasshoppers, grubs, worms. The wind's picked up. Insects. Alright. That's why I always tell people to prep food. Get food put back. Now I'm out here in no man's land. It's actually a beautiful country, but it's um it's just hot, nasty due to the weather. You can't carry all that stuff with you. No, you can't. The whole bug out, bug in between preppers has always been an argument and will always be an argument. I've always said to hide food in multiple locations. If this was an ideal bug out spot, I'd have food in the ground out here. I'd have stuff stashed out here. That way if I ever had to run to the woods, I wouldn't have to rely on trying to hunt big game. Because I have not seen any scat. I have not seen any tracks. Even game trails are far and few. Now, that's just this location. There's other locations where the stuff's everywhere. You go bear country, you'll find bear poop in just about every stream you go to. So yeah, you definitely need to have food put back. Have it put away somewhere. And why am I thinking and talking about food? Because I'm hungry. Right fast guys, I would like to talk about one of our affiliate programs here on the channel. The best way to protect your family is being prepared. Not only is Legacy Premium the best value in food storage, but it is also the best tasting and most nutritious. Up to a 25 year shelf life and free shipping on all orders, Legacy Food is a go-to for long-term emergency foods. Not only are we affiliated with Legacy Food Storage, we actually use them for our emergency long-term food preps. Legacy Food has the lowest cost per pound, Voted the best tasting, a 25 year shelf life, non-GMO, gluten free options, and yes, it's made here in the USA. So guys, if you want to help support the channel and support yourself with long term food storage, check out our affiliate links in the description. Now in the course there at the Self Reliance Outfitters for the Pathfinder course in Ohio, tonight, the third day, we would be given a raccoon to um, eat. You gotta dress it and everything else. From my understanding from the people that's already taken this course. The course I'll be taking in September. Right about now, I would be looking forward to a raccoon. Part of that course is sleep deprivation. I definitely have that. I've been up at night trying to gig frogs. Uh, constantly collecting water, firewood. Another part is food deprivation, hunger. Definitely got that. Now I gotta find out if we're allowed to, like I've been snatching bugs and everything else. While we're on the course, are we allowed to do the exact same thing or do we have a strict code where you cannot eat anything for this first two days? Well, technically three days because it's that evening you get the raccoon. So I'm running off very little fuel for my brain to work and for my body to work. I did take a breather. I am laying back. It is hot as hell. So I am relaxing underneath the tarp, out of the sun, and just kicking back for a while.
Okay, day four. We are evacuing out. We got a campsite all cleared out. Everything's on my back, except for a dirty clothes bag. And uh, we're heading out. So we got about a three hour walk ahead of us. It's uh, better to pack everything on your back as much as possible. Unfortunately, having all the camera equipment took up a lot of extra room. So we're on the nature path. Well, the nature walk path. They got little, little tiny bridges and stuff like that built over waterways. I decided to take the path of less resistance. I didn't sleep very much last night. With all that noise, whatever it was, it was around the camp. And because I am hungry and I'm tired, I don't want to go through the dense part of the woods trying to cut across and either stumble on top of something or get turned around. So I'm not thinking very clear right now. So at least with a path, I know it only goes one of two ways. And since I am going upstream, it means I'm going the right way. Okay, I dropped my pack because I saw something moving. You know, all these eating bugs that I've been doing? Of course, we're actually filling out. Let me show you something. Hey there, big guy. Oh, why are you sticking your head back in? Now, turtle. Oh yeah, I looked for turtles over in that swamp area several times trying to find a turtle. As in here's just an old box turtle, gopher turtle, uh, but he does have meat on him. But we're not going to eat him. He gets to uh, live free as a turtle for another day. But I'm warning you now, next time I come out here, I come across you, I'm going to eat you. Yeah, fair warning. All right, we ain't got much further. All right, so, the wife just showed up. There she is right over there. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Hello. Mm. Hey, y'all. I know I stink. <laughs> At least I get to come home with this. <laughs> after I take a shower. 